how's everybody doing out there? Hopefully this video will turn out semi-coherent. Um, I woke up at 2 a.m. this morning and I have not been back to sleep since that time. One person is watching, so it's working. All right. So, yeah, I'm really, really super tired, but this feels important to me. Um, today is October 24th. Hello, Alina. October 24th, 21. Two days from now is my birthday. And this is where we are currently with the grid situation. What a big group of us are now doing. And also, this is going to be a brief synopsis of my story, how I got started with this. Um, I'm not really comfortable making videos, just so you guys know. Um, I was the person in class that never, ever wanted to raise their hand, just so incredibly shy, didn't want to speak in front of anyone. So I'm always amazed that I can get myself to do this. Um, I've been doing it for a couple years now, but it's still a little bit out of my comfort zone. But I think that it helps people um, in some way to know that they aren't alone, that they're not experiencing these things alone. And also, I know that I'm kind of on the front lines. I'm kind of a front runner. So there's kind of a group of us that go through different realizations at different times. And sometimes it helps people um, for someone else. Now I'm throwing stuff. <laughs> for someone else to be there and tell what their experience is. I think it's helpful for people. I'm kind of glad to be doing this video on Saturday when there are only four of you watching. <laughs> because like I said, I'm a shy person. Um, I have a few people on my friends list that are hearing impaired and they've been asking me how to do, um, if I can figure out how to turn captions on. You guys that follow me know that I'm not that tech savvy and I don't know how to do it. But I have written out not my personal story but the actual grid information and I can either send that to you if you would like to have it. Um, a lot of times because my energy is really high, what happens is the lip movement is off from the sound when I record, especially if I use stars or tint the background or anything, which I'm not going to do. Um, and hopefully that will fix the problem, but we'll see, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, there's been a lot of talk about light workers and false light and all of that. And I ask you to ignore that banter for right now. Um, because a light worker, ultimately, we are so important on this planet. We've always been important on this planet. And so whatever light worker means to you, in its basic, most basic form, it means those who work with the light. Okay, so I'm going to share a story, my personal story with you, um, on how I came into sharing the light. I don't have a story like most people that say I woke up in 2007 or I woke up in 1999. I used to think it was unfortunate, but I came in this way. There were things that I studied and later learned uh, that took me down the rabbit hole, but I came in this way. So it was, um, quite the experience. Um, yeah, <laughs> quite the challenge to get used to, um, being clairvoyant, clairaudient, all that other stuff, um, from first grade, um, whenever it started. Like I said, I was born this way. So here's the brevity of my story. This is how I got started. I got pregnant at 23 years old. And during that pregnancy, I managed to gain 60 pounds. So 
by the time I went into labor, I weighed 189 pounds, if you can imagine that. So that's about 50, 60 pounds more than I weigh right now. Um, so I got pregnant at 23. I gained like 60 pounds and my knees were just in absolute excruciating pain. Um, and, and I didn't know what to do to relieve it because it started probably the pain in my knees probably started at about seven months pregnant. And so I had to go almost another three months with that pain. Um, and then laying there in bed one night, I remembered seeing a book on my uncle's bookshelf called, Are You a Light Worker? And I thought, I know I'm a light worker. I just knew I was a light worker and that book had popped into my head. So I had taken my hands, rubbed my hands together, put a hand on each knee um, to start healing myself because I didn't know what else to do. Um, the chiropractor didn't help me and basically, you know, I gained 60 pounds. There wasn't anything else I could do other than use this. So again, I started using this light at 23 years old. Um, I actually watched my hands light up. And you'll have to bear with me because I got up at 2 in the morning, like I said, started writing at about 5 in the morning. I didn't want to wake my girlfriend up who was sleeping in here on the couch, but I was tempted to make the video at 2 in the morning. So I got up and write, wrote about six pages of information, and that's what I'm going to be sharing with you. Um, so I started using that light on my knees, and I probably did this for maybe a week before I noticed any kind of major change, and then all the pain in my knees really stopped. Um, and then that was it. I didn't have any more strange experiences for probably maybe, uh, maybe another month. And then at seven months pregnant, I lay down to take a nap, and I just could not sleep for anything. Um, and then I remembered all the way back to standing up at my crib, talking to angels or beings, uh, interdimensional beings and, but had never heard anything in an, any, in an audient way. It was always a telepathic communication. But I'm laying in bed trying to nap. I'm seven months pregnant and I hear this very loud and audible voice for the first time in my entire life. And the voice said to me, your son will be born unto you a child of light as you were born unto your mother a child of light as, her, as she was born unto her mother as a child of light. And I stopped for a couple seconds. And the only thing that really stood out to me, besides the fact that I had never heard an, uh, never heard this voice other than in a telepathic way, was the fact that I was having a son. Because I kept going into the doctor for checkups, and the doctor wanted me to find out what the sex was so I could prepare. And I said, what do I need to prepare? I mean... Um, diapers and clothes. I don't really need to know what the sex is, but again, your son will be born unto you a child of light. So I knew that I was having a son. And that was pretty amazing. And and I told um I told Mike and he really didn't believe me, but he didn't believe much of anything, which leads to the next part of my story. So we'll fast forward to 1996. Zach was about 14 months old. Um, we would take turns every night putting him to sleep because at 14 months old, he was kind of like a sumo wrestler kind of fat, chubby kid. And so the only way he would want to be rocked to sleep, you could get him to sleep, was to rock him like this from side to side. And we would switch off every 10 minutes because after 10 minutes, you felt like your arms are going to break off. So this is what we did every single night. I'd do 10 minutes, he'd do 10 minutes until Zach finally went to sleep. Well, he had become so heavy for me <laughs> to be rocking at 14 months old that I got this brilliant idea that I was going to send him white light and try to lull him to sleep with that. And it worked. And so... You know, we would go in and take turns like we had normally done, but 
now every time it was my turn Zach was going to sleep and so his dad didn't have to do anything well I didn't say anything to his dad but I'll tell you what happened about a week later after sending Zachary white light for about six seven days Mike came out of his bedroom Zach's bedroom and shut the door and he was standing in the hallway and he was just like he looked like he had seen a ghost he was pale he was standing there with his mouth open and I asked him you know what's wrong and he said you're gonna think that I'm absolutely crazy and I I kind of had to hold my laughter in here and he said but when I picked Zach up out of the crib to rock him to sleep he first turned white and then he started glowing white light and then the whole room filled up with white light and at this point I felt like I had to tell him what I'd been doing so I told him what I had been doing to get him to sleep uh, he was not impressed <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination and by the look on his face I think he probably wishes that I had not shared that with him um, so why am I telling you all this? This really leads to where I am now and why I am doing what I've been doing um, this past year. I have had many issues. I've been unable to work in the physical capacity that I've been working the majority of my life, uh, which really caused me to switch gears and that's why I decided to come on and offer intuitive readings. So that, that's how that happened. Um, I asked, how can I serve without doing physical labor? I just was at that point where I really needed to figure that out. <clears throat> um, so I've always known through those brief examples um, from 1994 until now that I had this huge capacity to be a conduit of light. And I knew for decades that I had been working on the grid by walking around. I probably walked a 10-mile radius out of around the perimeter of 30, I think 34, 35 different places that I've lived now. Um, so I was doing that and I was consciously aware that I was doing it, but I had zero idea how it was actually working. And that's the second part of why I'm making this video. <clears throat> um, I've work, been working on my self-healing this entire past year. I've said I also have a couple of friends that um, volunteered to assist me in that way. You know who you are. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, it's been a great improvement, but it's also given me clarity to see the different grid systems, how they're working, and how I'm contributing to that. Um, before I go into the exact dialogue of that, I ask you to please... Um, look past the labels, look past the 3D words. As a person who can go in and out of multiple dimensions, at least up into 12, I don't know exactly, but I know I'm visiting at least 12 dimensions. Okay, so when I'm there, it's really hard to come back here and be able to take what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing and put it those things into 3D words. So don't get caught up in please or hung up in uh, I choose a word that doesn't resonate or whatever. Just because I ask you to listen to the basic story when I get to the part where I'm talking about what I'm actually seeing in the grids. Now. <clears throat> Since I've been working on my self-healing, since I had two friends come and offer to also help me do that, um, kind of in the fifth dimension, um, a lot has really, really shifted. So it started with this. First of all, I realized that I, that from the male perspective, the male perspective is very much looking at um, the microcosm, where the feminine is really kind of looking at the micro of this. Okay, so you're... The male's looking at the bigger picture. I'm looking at myself um, uh, with more of an up-close lens. Okay, that's why it's really important to be 
balance in our divine feminine and masculine energy and also talk to people, divine masculine, divine feminine that you are friends with. This is imperative. This has helped me so much. These friends have helped me so much. And that's why I'm, one of the reasons I want to share this. Um, so I go back into, let me look at this from the male perspective and those friends that have helped me do that. And then look at the bigger picture of this. Look at the grids, what's going on, and use that energy in my um, self-healing. So the day I decide to go back up there and pull that light into my hands. I, I was already able to heal myself twice with this, but I put my hands up and just asked to pull in the diamond white light of the multiverse into my body. And then I turned my hands around and started using that on myself. Now, within only a matter of probably a couple hours, somebody reached out to me and asked um, for a reading <laughs> specifically uh, looking at all the grids and I kind of do intuitive readings mostly with the intuition I've been using cards but I kind of was a little bit nervous about this because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to use cards for this there's not going to be a card for for looking at things that I don't even have um, the basic idea of okay so I had to just kind of trust myself um so this person reached out for a reading they wanted information on what are the gr different grids what's going on with the within the grid how is this person specifically working within the grid and i knew since this person was on my wave that it's that we were going to be um that we were out there in here doing the same thing um again it was monumental uh, but to have made that decision and have that person to turn around within a matter of hours and ask me to look at the grids. Um, and I actually put music on. I laid on the couch for about two hours. And then once I finally got myself uh, to relax, I was really just um, blown away. Um, by what I actually received. And I thought to write that out and kind of share that with you in that way. I really don't like to get too scripty scripty um, <laughs> on you. You can tell I'm tired. It's really showing in it. Um, but I have that part typed out. That's the part that I will share later um, for people that aren't maybe interested in the personal story or just um, the people that are hearing impaired that may specifically want that information. Um, so even though I had been consciously working on the grid for 30 years, I had never seen so much clarity about exactly what I was doing until this person asked me to look into it. Okay, and it's not just what I'm doing. It's not me just looking at what he's doing. It's what a huge group of us are doing, okay? And that's why... Um, I'm sharing this with you. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to read this because there's no way I could remember all this and I really wanted to kind of get it straight. Um, this is what I saw and heard. And again, uh, please leave me some uh, leeway in these words. Hi. Uh, and expressions that I'm using, um, floating in the ether, looking at things like this, Putting it back into conceptual 3D words is always a challenge. I'm going to do the best that I can do with this. Okay. So here's what I saw when I went and looked. And I didn't know how many grids there were or anything. And I want you to know that this is not all the information. My information is not all inclusive of everything that's going on. We only get what we are, the person who's reading it is, and also me, uh, uh, the understanding uh, of what we can grasp. So this is what it is, and I'm going to just read this to you. Hey, guys. The 3D grid is now completely turned on. It is breathing and pulsing light in this very moment of now. I watched that breath and pulse from the 5D plasmic grid and from the 12D 
solar grid. The solar grid, which is the grid where we hold our original inception of energy. Hello, Moto. Sorry, I knew that was going to happen. I don't know. I have a new phone and I don't know how to turn that off. Okay, so the 3D grid is now completely turned on. It's breathing and pulsing light in this now. I watched in breath, watched that breath and pulse from the solar grid and the 5D plasmic grid. The solar grid is our God, goddess connection. The word given here was Adani or Adonai. The biggest influence that all of us have on the 3D grid at this moment is in direct correlation with our body's 3D meridian. Keeping our body's 3D meridian system uh, clean and clear is the most effective path we have in altering the outer 3D world. Since the 3D grid is already turned on, what we are now accomplishing is to keep it free of pollution. We do this in two ways. The first way is by our intention of seeing a beautiful and clean, pristine planet. Um, that way also would be picking up trash in your neighborhood or doing recycling, doing all those things that that encompasses um, as well. The second way of keeping the Earth's grid 3D grid clean is keeping our own body's meridian clear. Now, there are things that are going to be more inclusive to this list, but these were the things that were affecting him and affecting I. So these are the things that are mentioned here. We know there's lots of things that affect us and that are not um, systemically good for our bodies. Um, but what came up for us was, sorry, get back to this, um, smoke, GMO foods, polluted water, dryer sheets, which that one surprised me, low frequency music and low frequency conversation. And sometimes we have to have those. Can't do anything about it. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the next grid that I saw. The next grid was the 5D grid, and that is the crystalline body grid, not only of our planet, but also of our individual body. This is where we are connected to the mineral and crystal kingdom, and this is where the higher self of the human body resides. I had no idea. Um... The higher self can be seen as the liaison, or they said in biblical terms, as the Holy Ghost. It's the one who delivers the message into the third dimension. The fifth dimensional grid is where we activate our crystalline body template. In visiting the 5D space, we turn on our DNA, and we also repair any cellular damage to our physical body, and our DNA that is already existing and not turned on. This is the same space, and I thought this was very interesting because after uh, some people offered to help me heal, this information came through that that's the space that you do it in, is that 5D space. So this is a space where we can heal ourselves and others by working with higher self of any selected individual residing in that space of the 5D. We can also help each other to problem solve and dissolve interpersonal conflicts in this space. Any healing assistance that we give to another being within this realm mirrors that healing back to ourselves. By doing this, we are also feeding the 3D grid with the crystalline light and plaza from the 5D grid where we are doing it which is giving more life and multidimensional breath, not only to our body, but also to this planet. Okay, the third grid that I went into was the solar grid. And because it was so far away, and because this was a reading for a person that was male, it came into my mind to 
invite that person's higher self up into that solar grid with me to expand the view that I had. And when I did that, that was amazing. So this is what came from the 12th, the, the 12th, the solar grid. This has been written about in many ways and in many forms and with many different words. Please allow yourself to feel into this and not associate too much with wording. Sometimes as a seer, it's hard to conceptualize what is being seen with three dimensional words. This space has been referred to the solar grid as the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sun, central sun, and great central sun, corresponding to the three parts of the brain. So in biblical terms, the text, um, the text was in reference to the Holy Trinity was actually in reference to the brain and the activation of the pineal gland and how the pineal gland works within the solar grid, which I found absolutely fascinating. Um, Okay, I shouldn't look at you guys because then I lose my place here. So, the solar grid activates our pineal gland. And as it does so, that light flashes and brings us encoded data. The solar grid is where our God, Goddess Self exists. It is our original form of light before we took on a human body. It's the ethers. These grids 3, 5, and 12 work together simultaneously. Since past the space of 3D, there is no time. What we now do in 3D simultaneously affects the 5D plasmatic grid and also the 12D solar grid. In the waking state, we are partially in the third dimension, but also in the fifth and occasionally in the twelfth solar grid. We are mostly in the realm of the solar grid while we are in the state of meditation or sleeping. Our higher self fluctuates between delivering information to the 3D self, residing within the fifth dimensional crystalline frequency, and returning the original form of God to bring light and energy back to our 3D body and also the 5D grid. So essentially our higher self goes to the realm of 12D to bring back to our body the remembrance and the power of creation. Higher self works as the conduit or the delivery system of all three grids. It delivers what you need for creation to manifest in 3D reality. And also it works within the 5D as well. This continuum of this happening feeds our expanded consciousness. And this was just so incredible to be up there in this space and see how amazing this person was doing and all of you are doing up there in that space. It's just so amazing. I just, I wish I had better words for it than I do. Um, if you guys want to see firsthand, this is the suggestion that came back from, from for him. The effect you're having on the earth, go to the solar grid for observation. Simply state your intention and allow yourself, your body to bilocate. You can intentionally bilocate to the fifth dimensional uh, crystalline plasmatic grid or the 12D solar grid, you can do both of those things. So go up there, take a look at yourself, take a look at what you're doing. This part blew my mind. By us being up there in that solar grid, we are actually, I saw this person and myself our energy was actually in that solar grid causing such an intensity that we are the reason that there are solar flares going on right now. Now, we are not the only reason, but we are a big contributor, and that was really quite mind-blowing to me um, to see that. So, our expanse, so we're doing all these things, going in and out of these grids and working in all these different dimensions, right? 
and then we're bringing it back to 3D, and then we're taking it back to 12D, we are causing solar flares, which come back down, give us more expanded consciousness. This was just an amazing and beautiful thing to watch. So doing all of this is propelling the higher self more quickly through all of those different layers and functions and dimensions of reality, being the relay system for all three grids. And what this is doing in real time is giving us more maneuverability within all the dimensions where our original God form seeks to create within the 3D and within the 5D. And this is the reason that we are initiating solar flares because we know that the planet needs expanded consciousness. I know I've lost many of you at this point, and I, and I kind of had a feeling this was going to happen, but at the same time, it felt like I was really important. I know that I have a lot of friends on my feed that are grid workers, and, a lot of, and the majority of them are totally aware that they're doing it. Um, so hopefully this helps some people to kind of get a better idea of what you can do. You can ask to go there. Um, I've said this many times, I meditate better walking usually than laying down, um, especially walking out in that solar um, inundation. It brings through a lot. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the people working in 5D and assisting me in my healing process. I cannot tell you how much that means to me. And I'm so so grateful for that all right and guys if you have other friends that are good workers in your feed feel free to share you don't ever need to ask for that um i know that even though there's a lot of su suppression going on within facebook and that videos kind of like stay at the bottom of the feed always i know in my heart this is going to get travel from my heart to the hearts of others and go to those people who need it. All right. I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for working in all these grids with me. Bye.